Hi there, and welcome back to Tradie Business School. It's just me, Michael McNish here for today's episode. And today I want to talk to you about Google reviews. And uh, I know that um, a lot of you had maybe a negative review on Google, potentially Facebook or any other website, but particularly um, Google. And you don't really know what to do about it. You don't really know how to handle it. Maybe you think it's going to affect your your professional reputation, potentially even in getting business. And if that's you, then um, this episode is for you. Social proof or, or people's reviews and testimonials is a part of life now. And um, I think over the last, well, let's say five years, don't really know exactly, but let's say five years, that there's been a lot of fear around allowing people to do reviews of our businesses because they might say something that's not true. And therefore, if they've given you one star, that's going to affect your reputation. So how do we actually handle that? The first instinct is usually to delete it. This is get rid of it because it's really going to impact you. But unfortunately, that functionality isn't really available unless you turn off all reviews, which is actually worse. So what can you do about it? The first thing to do about it, number one, is to make sure that you respond professionally to the negative review. So if there's one star and they've given you a comment, make sure that you do a professional reply rather than an emotional reply and invite them to communicate to your customer service team or give them an avenue of which to discuss further. What that will do is anyone else who reads your reviews, because they will, they want to see how you handle complaints. See, the thing is, is that for you not to have a bad review is actually not very realistic. And most people, when they're looking at reviews, and say you've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five star reviews, they'll read the five star reviews, and then they're going to usually look at the one star reviews. If there's no one star reviews, they probably will presume that you've paid everyone to do the reviews or it's not very uh, reasonable because let's face it, you can't please everybody and there's going to be someone who's annoyed at you. That's just a fact of life. That's what happens. And we also know that it's the complainers, the people who are upset are the ones that are going to be much more vocal in regards to online, you know, defamation, let's call it, right? So number one, respond professionally and invite them to speak to you on offline about it. The possibility is that you can actually resolve it offline and then turn that person who hates you into someone who loves you. So that's a possibility. And then they can actually go in and change their review. The second thing to do is not to focus on the negativity. Right? If you put all your energy, your obsession, your focus, your energy on your business or your pride and joy, your blood, sweat and tears into your business and you're going, oh my God, I've got this, I've got this one star review. What am I, ga- what am I going to do about that? Well, what that's going to do is going to put all your energy and focus in the negativity and unconsciously, you're going to attract more negativity into your day. It's going to ruin your day, that one little thing. Okay. So what I prefer that you do is rather than focusing on the negative review, is focus on gaining more positive reviews. So for every one negative, how can you get nine positive reviews? What are you doing in your business to maybe ask for more reviews? Because what that will do is it will push that review down, okay? So you kind of want to bury it. And even if it's sort of buried between layers, so you've got five, five, five star, five star, five star, then you've got like the one there and then you've got another five star, it doesn't look as bad. But when you don't have many reviews, it looks really bad because it makes your average rating low and it doesn't, you know, there's not much variety. So if you only have a couple of reviews and that you got a negative one, it hurts more. But if you can focus more on getting more positive reviews, then that's gonna make a huge impact in your ability to drown it out, okay? So really that's what I'd want you to focus on when you get a negative review. 
deal with it professionally, reach out to the client, okay? And see whether you can address address it professionally and then focus on how can we get more? It can be as simple as every job that you do, asking for a testimonial. Give them the link, make it really, really easy for them to go in and give you a review. In fact, you might like to write a business system and make sure you see some of our other episodes and how to do that if you're not really sure how, but write a business system on how to get customer reviews on Google and Facebook or wherever else you want to do it, okay? So if you can start to do that, then you're going to be focusing on what's more important and a highest and best use of your time as opposed to focusing on the negativity and all the crap, because let's face it, right? If you're doing that and focusing on that one, so you're probably focusing on the negativity in other areas of your business as well. The things that you're, maybe your team aren't doing particularly well on the job or other things that are going wrong in the business as opposed to what things are doing right and how can we amplify those and how can we get better results, okay? So ultimately, people are gonna say what they're gonna say, right? Whether it's visible to you or not, word of mouth, we all know, is usually the number one way in which you guys build your businesses. And if you don't get word of mouth, it means you're probably doing a bit of a poor job, right? But by seeing that negative review, it's actually a gift because it enables you to do something about it, okay? So number one, respond professionally. Number two, bury it. <laughs> get a lot more positive reviews and put your focus in your business on how can we continually get more. And by the way, it can be as simple as sending an email to your, um, your past clients, your current clients, but be warned, okay? <laughs> um, I worked with a client, we wrote an email, we sent it to the list and they got like 90, five star reviews at once. Like it was crazy. And Google penalized them because they had too many positive reviews thinking that something was sus. Okay. So just like, you know, if you're really, really popular and you ask the whole list, maybe just do a little like a segment at a time. Don't, don't send the entire list. But as you do your jobs, put a process in place. How can you get a testimonials, reviews, but also remember the number one thing, referrals. All right, so that's it for Trading Business School today. Make sure that um, you join the free group so that we can take the conversation further. If you have any issues with poor reviews or you want some feedback or ideas, you want to collaborate with other traders and general contractors like you, please make sure that you join us in the group. And in there, you'll get links to get the Path to Freedom book and audio book and all sorts of good stuff. So, mate, this is Michael from Trading Business School and look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank mm-hmm. you.